Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Silent Hill Downpour, PS3, Game Thoughts. Now, the game took me about 14 and a half hours, and I really like how the you know, as, as usual, we have multiple endings, and they very much go into the psychology of our protagonist. I like how, you know, Emery also is, is part of it. You know, the, the, I mentioned in the, in the review that this explores the theme of revenge, and there's kind of, for a lot of the game, you have this kind of thing of, did it really change things? Did it help Murphy that he killed, you know, Napier? You know, I, I just think it's a good thing that he did not throw him into a vat of acid because then he'd have the Joker on his hands. But then when, you know, then, then they introduced this thing of, you know, remember Cupcake, you owe me and you know, at the end we find out, you know, he was a good man. My father, dum dum dum. And that's why she's been so obsessed with Murphy. She wants revenge too. And it's got this thing of violence begets violence, the, the cycle of violence that, you know, Napier raped and murdered, what was it, Charlie, I think? I think Billy was the kid that he met in Silent Hill, and Charlie was his own kid. And Murphy kills Napier, and, you know, and kills someone else, because, you know, yeah, the, the cycle of violence. And then Anne-Marie is trying to kill Murphy in order to, or, you know, she wouldn't mind killing him. You know, she certainly wants some kind of revenge. And actually, I got the truth and justice ending. At first I thought it was the forgiveness ending, but then at the end, you know, I, I was reading about them, the, the different ones afterwards. I, I haven't watched it yet, but the one with, you know, the, the funny ending, you know, it's not UFOs, UFOs of course, but it sounds like a lot of fun. So, yeah, the... <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was, I was reading about them, sounded like forgiveness, but then, you know, I looked at Truth and Justice, oh, you know, she's there at the end with, you know, I don't know why people always are like, so, what's going on, when someone's obviously got their hands behind their back, you know, I mean, if, if someone ever comes up to me like that, I am probably shanking them first. I know, that of course, there's some chance that it's just like a, a bouquet of flowers or, or candy, but I'm taking my chances. It's almost always, you know, some kind of weapon in, in yeah. But it's a really great, yeah, just exploration of revenge of this kind of, and the, the recurring image with, you know, wheelchair man, or, you know, something like that, with this, you know, just these awful, you know, it's, it's, it looks like a man, but it clearly isn't quite anymore, and that's really, you know, like, like she says, a vegetable, you know, I, I just, basically what I'm saying is, you should, you know, Kenny is the same as he was, but now you should be thinking of as, Kenny the tomato. You know, he's no longer really a man. He is this nasty thing that, that looks like he was a man, but, but he's got tubes. And I am being horribly insensitive to people with, with, like, you know, someone on life support or something. I truly do not mean to. Silent Hill started, okay? Vatra started it. Anyway, what, what I'm getting at is it's... 
you know, he, he keeps showing up and you have all these wheelchairs. I noticed that early on, you know, you've got wheelchairs popping up every so often and clearly they have something to do with what's going on, but you don't realize for a while. And then they introduce, you know, of course you don't get to just take revenge, you know, when, when you do it, you know, when you make a deal with the devil, you know, it's, it's sort of a Faustian kind of thing with Sewell, I think his name was Sewell, you know, Cupcake. I'm going to call him Officer Cupcake. When you do a deal with someone like Officer Cupcake, of course he gonna, he's going to want something in return. And they, they keep having the, the, you know, my father the good man cop, you know, show up and he's, he's seeing the good in Murphy, he wants, to, you know, things for it, and, and at the same time, Cupcake cop, cop is all like, cop cake, I'm gonna go with cop cake, cop cake is all like, you know, just, uh, yeah, just remember our deal and this whole thing, of course he actually wanted, it is a really great twist, the way they build up, and when you find out what it actually is, it makes perfect sense with what you've seen up to that point. Now anyway, yes, so I got the Truth and Justice, which is very similar to the Forgiveness one, where you have this thing of basically, actually just briefly I want to comment on, you know, by the end of it, you know, in, in at least in the Truth and Justice one, it's like, you know, Murphy's like, I get her, I, I better get going. And, and, you know, and Marie's like, I guess you better. And he starts from, wait, thank you for telling me the truth. Okay. You're welcome. Wait, there's a kid in the OR, he's fighting cancer, and I'm gonna go give him some boxing clothes. Okay, yeah. And Marie, Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's just, it's, it's that kind of thing. I, I really thought that they, yeah, it's, okay, stop him once and then say everything you want to, you want said. And then, like, if, the cops are right there, you know, they're gonna spot him if he doesn't kind of, yeah. So anyway, it's this, it's this thing of, because, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm chasing her down as, as Boogeyman, and I, I really appreciate that we got to play as him a little bit. I mean, it's, it's the kind of thing that could really easily not quite work, seem, seem you know, kind of, you know, yeah, break the, the mood of, of horror, but it, it really worked. And besides, as far as I could tell, you can you know, you might not make it. If you die, you get a, a different ending. So, yeah. You know, after chasing her down and, you know, you've got the hangs, you know, I still spared her, and you've got this thing of, you know, she she forgives him, and you've got this whole thing of... What I'm saying is you've got a whole thing. We cut back to him, you know, with with, you know my father the good man, and, you know, he's like, it's not supposed to be this way, but I, I just, I have to shiv you, and, you know, I also like, you know, you pick up the mourning badge, you've got the, you know, you see the blood, you pick up the, the shiv, shank, some, something like that, and, yeah, you know, you've got all this, and, and you put that in the, in the scales of justice, very, very nicely done. Now, I also, I quite like the, the boss fight at the end. Now anyway, yeah, so, you know, other than fighting minions, minions of course, but the fighting in the entire game is kind of annoying. Anyway, yeah, you cut back and you see, you know, so Murphy didn't actually kill, you know, it's like, I serve you Napier on a platter and I still have to go finish him off for you and now I have to kill, uh, you know, 
father a good cop. Also, so you've got this whole... Yeah, it's just, it, it worked really well. This, you know, because again, revenge, what, when it comes down to it, when you're in the situation, can you really kill another human being, you know, and, and should you? And the... Now, from, from what I read of the other ones, I hope I don't get details wrong, but I did not actually watch these. There was something about that, you know, basically, Anne Marie can kill Murphy and get revenge, and then she wakes up, and it's this thing of, you know, I'm, I'm almost going to miss you. She's being transferred just like Murphy was at the start. Also, quite like how basically it starts with you killing Napier, and then Murphy wakes up, and you're like, was that a memory or a dream? What, what exactly, you know, and over the course of it, you know find out that he was a nice guy neighbor. Yeah, so, you know, suddenly Anne Marie is being transferred, and now Murphy is cop cake, and, yeah, this whole thing of, yeah, I, that, that was a, a nice thing of, you know, she kind of becomes that which she hated because she took revenge. Because what he did was on account of revenge. He did it to honor his part of the agreement, the, the Faustian agreement, so, yeah, and the, let's see, there's at least one more ending, I'm not entirely certain, yeah, it's something like that Murphy wakes back up in prison, and, you know, the, you've got the wheelchair figure there, and it, you know, drives off, and he's like, no, no, wait, you know, kind of thing. And then also, kind of, you know, he will never leave prison. He is, he is trapped. You know, also a nice way to, to do that. Now, I, I mentioned in the review that they're, while they are nicely designed, the enemies are not varied enough. Now, here, I can, of course, reveal that that is because they are basically exclusively humanoid. And, I mean, without spoiling anything from the other games, I mean, you have some enemies that are really not very humanoid in, in those games, and those are some of the most horrifying ones. I mean, sure, here some of them are really grotesque looking. I mean, you've got the one that climbs on the ceilings, and it's like, you know, huge mouth, and it's all pale and such, but it is still basically humanoid. I mean, it's slightly bigger, and it's pale, and it's got the mouth, but it it's still humanoid. It's not like, you know, yeah, to, to just briefly, I mean, Homecoming has this spider kind of thing, you know, the, the very first game, one of the very first enemies you encounter is basically a man-sized bat. That is really, really creepy. You know, that's, that's something you don't see every day. You know, that's not just that it's... yeah. And in this, as, as nicely designed as they were, they were basically all humanoid. So, yeah. Now... I suppose that more or less covers that. I really like the whole thing with the boogeyman, how, you know, you gotta learn the boogeyman rhyme. I do think that was a missed opportunity that when you're, when he's trying to remember it and say it, I think that should have been interactive. Maybe it was supposed to be at a point, because it, it really does seem, I mean, you're spending all this time picking up the three separate parts of the rhyme, and then suddenly he's standing there trying to remember. They should have done that with, like, dialogue choices, you know, where it just, it, you know, you have different, different choices that all sound like they could be the right one, and if you do it wrong, you know, I don't know, I guess maybe the, the boogeyman also kills you, you know, the, like, yeah, actually, let's say you mess it up. The, you know, you see the boogeyman coming at, uh, I think it's Billy. And 
you know, grabbing him as Murphy's trying to say the rhyme. Let's say you mess it up. You know, the, the boogeyman could just, like, look up at you and then come rushing and smash you with the hammer, you know, hitting the hammer through the door and just destroy you. And then you have to try again. You know, that could work. And then, really, at the end of it, you know, you were just a little bit too slow. Like, just like in the cutscene, you know, he finishes the rhyme, but it's too late. Billy has already died. Now, but, but yeah, the, the whole thing with the boogeyman, the, the entire monastery bit was really good. They, they, I mean, they again found this thing that's really terrifying, at least potentially, it's really creepy. You've got all this stuff, you know, you keep finding these parts of the story like, you know, oh, he's really antisocial, you know, this, this kid, so we have to, you know, he's not really responding to the medication, and he writes this letter to the parents, we're like, mommy and daddy, please, the medication makes me feel sick, I don't want to be here anymore, and then you find this note, you know, any correspondence between him and his parents has to go through me from now on, you know, and you find this thing about, oh, we got, you know, you find this note to the parents that says, I'm afraid he died during the operation. By the way, you already signed saying that we were not liable, you know, we're not responsible for his death. And then you find out, you know, it was like a, a full frontal lobotomy and this whole thing. It's just really nasty. And this is the kind of thing that did happen, you know, the, and this is sort of, this is one of the key elements of Silent Hill, to find these creepy things in, that not, not necessarily even that far in the past, but just, they took place and we're all like, just, creeped out by that, just the, the realization, you know, it doesn't have to be really way out there, but just a little story like that is, is really horrifying, you know, so, so yeah, you've, you've got that, the entire monastery bit, you know, I, I think there must be some mistake, I mean, no, you were the only family, let's just, come I in. Mean, feel free to look around and then she disappears and you've got this entire bit and then you meet back up with her and it's like, well, you have to, you know, identify, sh shall we, and you know, pull it off. No, and it's like, it's Boogeyman lying there, you know, just child size. And that thing's not my child. He's a monster. Well, I guess it runs in the family. Oh, man, that is just... And, and you're like, oh, it's the boat key that Bobby Ricks was talking about. So you grab for it and hand comes up, you know, he grows to full size, and then you've got a, you know, that entire fight bit. And then later, when Murphy looks like the boogeyman to her, and, and this whole thing, you know, because, yeah, you know, it, it's, I'm not sure the game really says how long, but I imagine it's been a while, you know, that since... Actually, I suppose it doesn't even need to have... Anyway, to her, you know, it is the, the worst thing. You know, she, she looks at him and she sees, you know, Murphy. She sees the monster. And in Silent Hill, it's it's the boogeyman with, with the gas mask and the whole thing and the hammer. You know, it's it's a cool design without being, like, completely... It's, it's one of the less otherworldly designs, really. It's, it's not that different from something you might see. So it's, that, that's, that's interesting. And this whole thing of, you know, she realizes as well something's going on. And she keeps pushing, she keeps keeping them there, you might say. You know, when she's there with, with Bobby Ricks, she obviously doesn't want him to leave. And she gets to the boat as well, and, you know, stops them, and, yeah, that whole thing. I think she did fire a shot when he's like, you're just gonna have to shoot me, and she's like, fine. I guess she just shot the, the boat, maybe, or something. Or maybe the sound we heard was her knocking him out. Not entirely sure, but, yeah. But it's, you know... Yeah, the, the the series does have a great sort of 
yeah, they, they keep doing the thing well of this, there's more than one person trapped in Silent Hill, and more than one of them are going through some psychological issues that the town is, is bringing forth. Now, I suppose that might more or less cover it. I, I do gotta mention the yeah in the, in the review I mentioned the several rides you take. I love the the train ride in the caves. You know you you read about how oh they die sometimes and you know you've just had this thing of the the children that died with with you know was it J P Sater or something like that and you know first you see him and he's just like admiring. You know how far down that goes? And he throws the thing and looks for it. And then the next time, he's just standing on the outside. He's not standing in a completely different spot. I mean, he is. Otherwise, you wouldn't be meeting back up with him without going back. Or do you? Anyway, yeah, he's... It's not that it's completely different. It's just right on the outside now of the... And, and just the rail kind of thing... In our minds, we're like, as long as we're on the inside of the railing, we're fine, we're safe, you know. And the moment he's standing out there, it's just really horrifying looking. And, you know, so yeah, you've already had that thing of he's, you know, people have died using this railway, you know, this train thing, even recently, you know. And I also love, you know, Murphy. I mean, I. You know, you get the choice, you know, taunt him and, and try to talk him, you know, in. I, I tried to talk him in, but, you know, Murphy still says, you know, I wouldn't hurt children, and there you again have this thing of, you know, the, you know, his, his child that he doesn't completely, you know, it, it, for a while it's, it's vague what exactly happened and you, you know, gradually realize that there was something with his kid. Actually, from what I read in one of the endings, apparently he murdered his own child in order to get back at his wife for getting custody, something like that. That's a really great twisted ending, you know, really messed up. So that's, yeah. Now, the... Let's see, yeah, so after all that, you still have to get on the train, and just, it, it goes insane, you know, the ride, and you end up with, with someone's face. I'm not certain who exactly that is, or that is supposed to be, but, yeah, that's that's really horrifying. And, you know, the, the bit with the elevator, just, yeah. Actually, I suppose there are several bits with elevators. Yeah, I suppose that covers it. I I would like give like my favorite stuff with the with the like Dahaka like chase of you know this ball of light that eats everything behind you. I loved every bit of that. Honestly, I mean even you know, near the end they start actually doing the shattered memories thing of the kind of supernatural, what's it called, like maze kind of thing, where you're going into, corn is what I'm saying, where you go into a specific, you know, you go through a door and then you teleport it, so you didn't actually necessarily make progress. They start doing that thing, and I still loved it. They still did it in a way that wasn't frustrating, but just fun. I do think that the, you know, once you start have, having enemies rush at you and, you know, that did get frustrating, but all the fighting in the game got frustrating, basically, you know, or it, it often did, you know, and, and, you know, once I realized, hey, as long as, you know, I quickly bring out the shotgun, blow them, that does solve a lot of life's problems, that, you know, then I don't really have to worry about them, but... Yeah, that entire bit. I loved when they... Oh, here I go anyway. I loved when they had you moving around, like you're, you're going down a hallway. 
and suddenly you have to turn around a corner and it follows you around the corner. This is the kind of thing that so easily could be extremely silly. Oh, what, the supernatural entity is turning corners now to... to but it works. It just, it, it works. You know, that whole thing, yeah. Now, I like that, you know, the, the mailman keeps saying, you know, if you... You know, if you just, if you accept the truth, then you don't have to run. There's stuff like that, you know. Very, very nicely done. And it, there is this thing of every time Murphy meets him, he tells him something. You know, something that needs to be said to Murphy. He doesn't necessarily help him find a way out, but, or at least... Not necessarily a direct, direct path out, but he does tell him things that, yeah, that he needs to hear and that gradually help him towards, you know, I mean, basically, Silent Hill, you never get out of Silent Hill if you don't realize, if you don't accept what is going on. And usually what is going on has a direct link to your own psyche in, in some way. Now, I suppose that just about covers it. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.